Thank you for tuning in to the TV 24 News. I'm Courtney Lynham. Here's the news for Monday, April 15th, 2024. Presented by Team One Chevrolet of Gadsden. As we gear up for Tuesday, April 16th, mark your calendars as a significant day for Calhoun County's political landscape. It's the primary runoff and the stakes are high as residents will decide the next probate judge. In a unique twist, with no Democratic opposition slated for the November 5th general election, the outcome of this runoff holds immense weight. Will it be John Garlic or Shirley Millwood who clinches the position? The decision rests in the hands of Calhoun County voters. Let's not underestimate the role of the probate judge. This individual is tasked with a crucial, crucial responsibility, managing a budget that directly impacts the diverse range of services provided to the people of Calhoun County. From legal matters, mental health, to estate administration, the probate judge's office touches many aspects of citizens' lives. So, to all, our viewers, I urge you to exercise your right to vote. Your voice matters and it's through your participation that the democratic process thrives. Do your research and understand the candidates platforms and most importantly, head to the polls on Tuesday, April 16th. Let your voice be heard Calhoun County. Get out and vote. Today we shine a spotlight on an exceptional educators of Oxford City Schools who are making waves in the world of education. Oxford High School teacher Jennifer Dazinger and Coldwater Elementary School teacher Janet Kuchin Kuchinski, my apologies, are celebrating as they've been named finalists for the prestigious Alabama Teacher of the Year Award, landing them in the esteemed Sweet 16 Finals. The Alabama Department of Education has meticulously sifted through nominations to narrow down the contenders, and these two remarkable teachers have emerged as shining examples of dedication and excellence in their field. Jennifer Dazinger teaches grades 10 through 12 at Oxford, brings 27 years of teaching experience to the table. Her commitment to fostering personal connections with her students sets her apart. Dazinger prioritizes not just academic learning, but also the social and emotional well-being of her students, recognizing that education extends beyond textbooks. Janet Kuchinski brings her passion for special education to Coldwater Elementary with 22 years of teaching under her belt. Kuchinski understands the importance of building relationships with her students, especially those with special needs. She ensures that their basic needs are met, creating an environment where learning can thrive. Both educators have left indelible mark on their students and colleagues. Their dedication, innovation, and unwavering commitment to student success has not gone unnoticed. Dr. Shannon Stanley, superintendent of Oxford City Schools, expressed immense pride in their achievements, highlighting the positive impact they have on students' lives every day. As we eagerly await the announcement of the winner in May, let's recognize the invaluable contributions of teachers like Dasinger and Kuchinski. They epitomize the best of our education system, inspiring future generations and shaping the leaders of tomorrow. So let's join in celebrating these outstanding educators and wish them the best of luck as they continue to make a difference in the lives of students across Oxford City Schools and beyond. Now let's go to the WEAC TV 24 Community Spotlight. Today we have Coach Mark O'Brien with Coosa Christian. Hello, this is Mark O'Brien, head football coach at Coosa Christian High School. Uh, I'd ask you to go to www.coosachristian.com. Um, if you're interested in bringing your, your student, whether it be four year old, whether it be a senior, uh, we accept all students there. Um, and, uh, you know, go to the website uh, and uh, you can make the phone call once you get the number from the website and set up an appointment. Uh, we can, we can um, give you a tour. You'll ask to speak with Julie Delp or Amanda Justice. Both of those are the principal and assistant principal. Uh, if you're also looking to get in the advertising in the sports world, um, we are advertising on our Jumbotron. Uh, you can reach me. Um, at Mark O'Brien at CoosaChristian.org. Uh, we're taking on new sponsorships to, to do many things with our kids, whether it be feed them or whether it put them in a hotel room on Thursday night, the day before the game. Um, we're partnering up with several people uh, across this area, and we would love to partner with you. So 
I uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you for your time. It's time now to check in with your local area weather with Lacey Clontz. For today's forecast extra, the periodic warming of the equatorial Pacific Ocean waters, also known as El Nino, continues to weaken. According to the latest update from NOAA, the full transition is expected by summer. There's an 80% chance of London nearby early fall. The transition means that we expect a more active Atlantic hurricane season. Now coming up here in Oxford tonight, temperatures are getting down to 61 degrees and we'll have overcast skies. And tomorrow it's getting all the way up to 82 degrees and we'll have cloudy skies. Now, we are going to see a slight chance of rain every day for the remainder of the week. Wednesday, the temperature will get up to 78 degrees and we'll see a 40% chance of rain. Thursday, partly cloudy skies with a high of 86 and only a 20% chance of rain. Friday, a 30% chance of scattered thunderstorms with a high of 80. Saturday, a 20% chance of rain with a high of 74. Sunday, it's only getting up to 68 degrees, but only with a 10% chance of rain. And then finally, heading into next week, Monday, partly cloudy skies with a high of 71 and a 20% chance of showers. I'm Lacey Klontz with your TV 24 weather. Thank you, Lacey. Now let's go check in with sports with Roger Flint. Happy Monday, April 15th, tax day. Oh my goodness, we won't even discuss that, okay? Let's get going. Let's moving on to sports, okay? Locally, a lot of things going on right now. Spring sports, big time. Full blast. Baseball winding down. Got all your playoffs set now. All your local teams. Girls softball this week. Very heavy schedule. A lot of area games going on. That's going to be decided soon. So, a lot to discuss today, so let's get going, okay? Let's start off with the uh, high school baseball. Uh, they've already finished up area play. Playoffs are set. Uh, that's great to hear that all get started later on this week. Uh, over the weekend, you had baseball. You had Alexander swept Southside in a doubleheader, 4-3 to three and 11-7. to seven. That clinched area Area 12 Class 5A for the Valley Cubs, and they will host Douglas this Friday in the first round of the playoffs. Trip Patterson, uh, four hitter in game one. He had six Ks, two earned runs, and a seven inning complete game. Uh, Trip is kind of one of those rarities. You give him the ball, he's going out there and he's wanting to pitch a complete game. Not many of those guys around anymore, so congratulations to Trip on a uh, Really well pitched game. Uh, big hitters for the Valley Cubs in the double header. You had Hay Aiden Bruner had a triple, double RBI. Uh, Zach Baskins, two for two run and an RBI. Brody Slayton, Samuel Henniger, both of those guys had RBIs. Evan Snow was two for two, double, two runs and an RBI. Braden Thacker and Nick Thompson, an RBI each. Uh, Oxford also sub celebrated a big senior day with a uh, doubleheader with American Christian. Uh, some of the Oxford seniors, R.J. Brooks, Ty Ginn, Forrest Teacock, Carter Johnson, Judd Sire, and Branson Whiteside. Uh, in the game, Reed Maniscalco hit his second uh, home run of the year. He caught had an RBI single. Gavin Griner pitched five and a third innings, and uh, Bryson Bradford closed it out. So uh, congratulations to Oxford also. They had already clinched the uh, area, 6A area there. So they will open up this weekend with Parker. Uh, some other games in the area, playoff baseball games, opens up Thursday or Friday. You got Class 5A, Southside at ARAB. You've got Class 4A, North Jackson at Jacksonville, White Plains at Etowah, Geneva at Munford, and then in 3A, you have Sylvania at Piedmont, Welburn at Plainview, and then in 2A, Donahoe at Southeastern, Cottonwood at Ranburn, and 1A, JCA at Athens Bible. So these all gets going Thursday or Friday of this week, and this is, this is boys' high school baseball. Then we have girls' softball, 
very heavy schedule this week. A lot of uh, area games going on, finishing that up. Softball is usually kind of a week behind the baseball, so that all finish up this uh, this week. Uh, we had some girls softball games over the weekend. A couple of tournaments were going on, just little local tournaments. Oxford won all three games in a tournament in Lincoln. Uh, they beat Lincoln eleven to nothing. Asheville eight to one. Munford four to one. Berkeley Mooney had a no hitter, hit a home run. Ashlyn Burns, Emma Timms, Makara both hit home runs. Other big hitters for the Yellow Jackets, Kaylin Crossley, Reagan Sanders, uh, Adija Wilson, Jayla Jackson, Jordan Alexander. Pleasant Valley, they also played in a little tournament. They split two games with Randolph County, losing 3-2 to two the first game, 10-9 to nine the second. Some of the Big hitters was Madison Cromer, three for five RBI and a run. Lily Henry, two for five home run, two RBI, two runs. Alexa Cranmer, two RBIs and a run. Uh, Gracie Ward, Haley Lee, Lily Robinson, Jordan Cheatwood, Aubrey Comer, other big hitters there. We like to give these kids shout outs if we can. I hope I get the names right. If I do not, forgive me, but you can call me out too. You know, I'm not like a sports journalist or sports reporter i'm just a guy here trying to give y'all some information on some sports about these kids so yeah anyway i try to get as many names as i can okay but uh the girls schedule like i said they've got games going on this week we'll keep you updated all week on that uh also some big news coming out of jsu they are the 2024 ncaa bowling national champions they defeated Arkansas State Saturday night. Congratulations to those girls. Big accomplishment, okay? Then we had the Masters. What a finish. Uh, right down to the wire. It's about the 10th hole or so. Scotty Scheffler, what a great round of golf he played yesterday. He ended up winning the tournament with a minus 11 score. Ludwig Oberg, minus 7. Max Homa, minus 4. Colin Morikawa, minus four, and Tommy Fleetwood, minus four. Brutal conditions all weekend. Winds 35, 40 miles an hour. I watched a lot of the tournament. Those guys usually do not miss greens. They were missing greens. Putts were just all over the place. The greens were super fast. So, Scotty Scheffler, give him credit. What a great round he put together, and what a great guy, too. If you haven't Follow this guy, follow this guy. He's one of the good ones out there. Uh, and then now last, but of course not least, the Atlanta Braves won two of three against the Florida, excuse me, the Miami Marlins. I keep wanting to call them the Florida Marlins. But anyway, uh, two out of three against those guys. Max Fried in game one looked like his old dominant self which we needed because the last couple outings for him has not been too good. They won that one eight to one. They dropped game two, five to one. Chris Sale didn't look very sharp. Offense didn't get anything going. Then they came back and won game three, nine to seven. Pounded out 12 hits. So right now, early in the season, the Atlanta Braves are nine and five and they are two games up in the NL East. So uh, that gets you updated on your sports for this Monday, April 15th. Uh, I hope everyone has a good day, and uh, get out and enjoy this beautiful weather. It's going to be great this week. A lot of things going on locally with all these kids out there playing sports. Get out there and support these guys and root them on. Playoffs coming up, and uh we wish all the area teams good luck, and we'll be keeping you up to date on everything we can during this playoff uh, run. So have a good day, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Roger. And thank you for tuning in to the TV 24 News presented by Team 1 Chevrolet of Gadsden. Have a great evening, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.